Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna go ahead and implement the log out function now. So we, in our front end here, we have inside of our context, we have a login user, we have a register, and now we need to go ahead and log out the user. So this should be pretty easy to implement. It'll be pretty similar to these other things we've done so far. And so we'll follow the same sort of process as we did before. And so we'll start by creating a new function inside of our authentication context. So at the really bottom here, below the end of my register function, yeah, so right here, I'll go to create a new function. We'll call it const logout. This will equal an async function. And inside of here, we'll have a try catch. And this catch is going to be the same as before. So I'm going to go and just copy all of this. Let's see here. Yeah, so everything inside of the catch right here. I'm going to just copy that and paste it right in here. Which we put error as an argument right there. Okay, and now let's have our try. First thing we'll do here is we want to go ahead, we want to remove the HTTP only cookie. And this will be done with an API request that we'll create. Um, so we'll create another API function instead of our APIs. We go inside pages, API, where we have our login register. We'll create a logout there to be able to delete this HTTP only cookie. So for now, I'm gonna go and type out the request to that API and we'll create it here in a second. So we'll go await axios.post because we're we'll gonna make a post request to this, this route. This will be HTTP colon slash local host port 3000 slash API slash logout. Then once we have that HTTP only cookie deleted, the next step is to remove the access token and the user from the state. So we can do this pretty easily by just doing set user, which is a function here at the top. We have the set user function, which is holding our user object. And we also have the set access token, which is holding our access token. So for both of these, I'm going to set them both to null. So set user of null and pass in null and then do set access token and pass in null. And that will delete both of those out of our state. And so we'll no longer have a user saved in our application. And that's all that our logout function looks like. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. It's pretty easy to do. It's just pretty much delete the HTTP only cookie and set both of these to null and check for any errors in case there was some error that came during the request or response. Okay, let's go ahead now and build that API function that will map to this right here. So we'll do here inside of our API folder, we'll create a new file. We'll save this as logout.js. And in this file here, first we'll import cookie because we'll need to access our cookies. So we'll need to use this cookie library we've been using. And then we're going to go ahead and export default async. Request response, make an arrow function. And so what we need to do here is we need to kind of follow the same logic that we did in our login. What we did was we called res.set header. We set a cookie and then we cookie did called cookie.serialize. And on this refresh token, we set it to whatever we got back in a response as a refresh token. We'll do the same thing here, but instead of passing this data in, we'll pass an empty string in. So by setting it to an empty string, we're then removing it from our HTTP only cookies. So now there'll be, there'll be a refresh token, but it'll be set to an empty string and not a valid token. Hopefully that makes sense. So what we'll go ahead and do is call res.set header, and we'll call set cookie like before, and then we'll do cookie.serialize, just like we did previously. And the name will need the match to be the exact same. So in our case, we called it refresh. Make sure you call it the same as before. Set it to an empty string. Then we'll pass in some options to it. So we'll set HTTP only set to true, we'll set secure to false, we'll set expires to new date, and pass in a zero, and then we'll do a same site of strict, and we'll do a path set to an empty string, or to a single slash. So I explained these in the previous video when we went through the login, 
about what all these are doing. Uh, and they're also available in the documentation, which will be in the description. So if you want to go ahead and read up on these different options and, and what how you can set different options for this cookie.serialize function, it's all, it'll all be there for you. I'm not going to explain it again in this video, but that will be in the description if you want to learn more about that. And then finally, at the very end here, we'll do a res.status because we need to make sure we return something. So we'll go ahead and return a 200 response and a JSON message. So we'll do message. Oh, sorry. Make sure you have curly braces here, then message. And then we can go ahead and pass in a string of user has been logged out. Just like that. And that is it for that log out API function. That's all we need. All we need to really do here is make sure we remove that cookie and return a 200 response once we're done. Okay, and now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and set up our navbar to actually call this function in our authentication context, the new one we wrote, and actually run this logic to log the user out. But one more thing I forgot before we continue is that down here inside of the authentication context provider in this value prop, we need to make sure we pass in log out as a prop here. So we do log out. Okay, now let's go ahead and jump into our components and our navbar and we'll go ahead and update it to log the user out so if we come down here you'll see right here so we have a sign out and a sign in so in whenever we click the sign out we want to go ahead and run that logic so what we'll do here is we'll add an on click on this list item text here. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and add on click. Set that equal to handle log out. Okay, now let's go ahead and create this handle log out function. So I'll come up here and I'll go ahead and create a const handle log out equals narrow function, just like that. And we'll go ahead and pass in one argument, which is just the event argument. We'll call it E. And then we'll go ahead and do e.prevent default, and this will prevent any default behavior, no page refreshes or anything like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and call await log out. But right now we're not bringing in this logout function, so it doesn't know what this is yet. So let's go ahead and update that so that it knows what that is. So we'll come up here to our use context. And in the previous video, we set this up already, so we already have our use context set up so we can access our functions. So all I need to do is next to user, put a comma and put log out, and that'll give us access to that log out function. If this is not familiar to you, uh, we, we set all this up and went over it in the previous video. Uh, so go ahead and watch that if this is still confusing. But with that done, we should be able to call our log out function. Uh, there is one more thing I'm gonna do real quick while we're here. We never added a register button here, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So where we have sign in, I'm going to go and create another list item right here, paste it right there. And then I need to make sure I put in a parent element right here. So we'll put a react fragment there and a react fragment there. So in the case of anywhere we use uh, parentheses or curly races inside of react, it doesn't like it when you don't have one parent, it will throw an error. So in this case, if you need a parent, you can put just empty tags, uh, which is called a React fragment, which doesn't put anything in HTML, but it's all, it uh, fulfills the requirement of having one parent. So when we have multiple elements. Uh, this is no longer the parent because now there's two of them at the same level. So we need to make sure we put in a React fragment. Okay, so now with that in there, let's go ahead and change this to go to register. And we'll change this as well to say register. We'll save that. Um, let's go and try this out. Oh, I forgot to make that handle logout an async function. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So up here, this handle logout needs to be an async function since we're using await inside of here. Uh, if this is inside of it, it needs to be an async function. So make sure we add that there and we should be good there. And it looks like our routes are a little messed up. So let's go ahead and fix that. If you look inside of our pages here, we go to pages account and then login register. So the issue must be that we didn't put account in front of this. So let's go ahead and change this. So this should be account slash login. And this down here should be account slash register. 
It also looks like I have a router.push going to the uh, logout page, which doesn't exist. That must be from a previous video. I'm not sure why I have that there. I'm going to go and just delete that off of there. Okay, let's go ahead and try this now. So we'll come back here. We'll click on sign in. And there we go. So now let's go ahead and sign in real quick. Hit login. And there we go. Looking back here, we have a sign out button. If you click on that, we are getting an error saying unexpected token. I forgot to put a comma next to new date. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So inside of our API log out, I'm missing a comma right there. I'll fix that. And then when you go ahead and refresh the page and try this again. Now let's try clicking sign out. And there we go. I'll go ahead and do it one more time just to show what's happening here. So go to sign in, we'll sign in. And then we come up here, we have a sign out button. When we click on it, it then takes us, it signs us out and it refreshes the nav bar to show sign in and register. And both of these take us to our sign and register pages. So this is checking if there's a user. Well, as soon as we hit the sign out button, it removes the user. So now this goes back to the unauthenticated routes, just like that. So that's all working pretty good. Um, there's one thing we could do that might be a little better on this thing here. We put the button or the on click on the item text. We might as well just put it on the actual list item itself. That would make more sense anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out this, paste this here, save that, and then go ahead and just test it one more time to make sure it still works. So I'll go ahead and sign in. And I'll come back here and click sign out and it signs us out as soon as we click that button. So that's all working great. And that is it for this video. Now we have our sign in, register and log out buttons working. We still need to persist the user because as soon as we refresh the page, it also logs out the user. So we'll make sure to do that next time. Uh, and that should be most of our authentication done at that point. So all the code will be in the description below as well as any links to any documentation or anything that might be helpful. Uh, but that's really it. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.